Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Java 2D Game Development. Maybe I'll call it 2D Game Development. I haven't decided upon the name of the series exactly yet. Um, but today we're going to just go through this program f class file here, which is .java, not .class, it's .java. Uh, actually, .class means it's been compiled. And I explained compiling a little bit in the last episode. I won't explain it much more here because this is Java game development. It's not just pure Java, um, but I will go over it later, maybe. Um, anyway, let's just go over a little bit of what this is doing really quick. Um, that way we can get into actual game development later on, okay? So first off, we're going to read through this line, word for word, or in this case, curly bracket, okay? First word is highlighted purple. And it's all the words that are highlighted in purple are called keywords. Keywords are special phrases that Java has restricted to be used as, well, very specific words that mean very specific things. In this case, we have public, which means, and this might be a little over some of your heads um, because you don't know much yet which is perfectly fine. That's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for, to teach you guys. Um, public means any other Java file can access this class, and it can use this class for its own benefit. Class just tells us, okay, we're making a class. A class is a, a, te or a text file, basically, that tells Java, hey, this is what this file is supposed to be able to do and represent. Next up is the name of this class, which has to rep which has to match up with the name of this file minus the .java part. So program, program, .java up there, but it's still program, and this is still program. It matches perfectly. It's the name of it. Then we have a curly bracket, and in Java and a lot of other programming languages, curly brackets an opening one like this means start of a block. I'll explain blocks a little bit um, in a moment once we get down to this part. Um, a block, it opens a block and then every opened block needs to be closed. So that's what this closing parenthesis down here does. As you can see, when we have our, map, our caret, which is this little blinking thing here, that's called a caret. I never knew that till recently. Um, when our caret is next to a curly bracket, you'll see another curly bracket somewhere in your file has a box around it. That's to tell you that that curly bracket you're right next to corresponds to the other one. Inside of our class, we have public, again, meaning anybody who can access this class can access this method, um, because this line is defining a method. What's a method, huh? Well, a method is like a group of code that can be called by one line of code. It does all the work that is put into it, but everywhere else can do it. Anytime you want to use that method, you can do it in one line, and it just will execute through everything inside that block. I'll explain blocks, like I said, in a moment. Static means that you don't have to create a new program object, and this, I have not explained objects yet. We'll get into that later on. Um, program object, okay? It creates a new program. It means this can be called without making an object. And just keep that in the back of your minds. Maybe Google what an object is in Java, but I'm not going to teach it right now. Void, all right, so methods can return values. This means like if you wanted a method that would tell you what somebody's name is, it could return like John Doe or s something. It could return it and that way you wouldn't have to actually do a whole bunch of work to find it. It would, you could call it in one line, this method would find it for you and then it would give it back to you. But void means it does not return anything. It does not give anything back because it's selfish like that, okay? Um, next up is the name of our method. Uh, the method that the program starts out with has to be called main, as it is here. 
has to be called that or else your program can't start at all. Uh, next up, we have parentheses. Now, parentheses are a little bit like curly brackets, but they have a lot of differences. To begin, curly brackets open and close blocks. Parentheses don't. Parentheses open and close sets of data. So in this case, we have a string array, which we'll go over strings and arrays more later on. Uh, just for now, know that a string is like a group of words which actually this thing down here is a string. It's like a group of words, a group of letters, and an array is a group of whatever it's an array of. So it's an array of strings, so it's a group of groups of characters. Kind of confusing, I know. I'm sorry. Then we name our parameter. All right, so I'm going to explain this real quick. These parentheses are opening and closing a set of data called parameters. Every method has to have these uh, parentheses, but not every method has to have parameters, but this method does. In fact, the main method has to have parameters. But what does, what do parameters do? Parameters are data given to a method that helps it complete its job as a method. So this guy right here, we're saying, whenever you call this method, I'm going to need an array of strings called, and I'm going to need an array of strings. I'm going to need it to work correctly. That's what this part is saying. And right here is the name of your parameter. You can name a parameter anything you want as long as it follows the variable naming rules, meaning it can't start with a number. Um, it cannot have spaces in it. But it, as long as it starts with a letter, uppercase or lowercase, or an underscore, you can have, after that, as many letters as you want. They can be uppercase, lowercase. You can have numbers, and you can have underscores. Any of those are OK. The only thing about all of those different types of characters is you can't start your variable name with a number. So after that, we open a block. What was a block? I've heard this term a lot, but BB has never explained it. Can you help me out? Yes, I can. All right, so a block is a group of several lines of code put into like one set of curly brackets, making it a block of code. It's like a good analogy of this could be you've got one slab of wood. Okay, this is a terrible analogy, but hopefully you guys get you've got one slab of wood which will do a good job of like covering something right it can do a little bit one small slab of, of like plywood but if you put more slabs on top of it and you like group them together with s rope or something then it becomes one s big block of plywood and this big block of plywood could be used for a lot more than could have just one slab of it been. So like these two lines, technically this is what I'm about to say is incorrect, but I'm just demonstrating an idea here. So these two lines wouldn't be able to do as much without each other, but they could have done something, just not just with each other, they're much better off. And so they're being tied together with ropes known as curly brackets. The first line inside this block is a comment, though, and the comment, you'll notice it's got this green look to it um, in this. Uh, a comment can start with this. I'll, I'll go over comments better next time, but just know that comments, when a Java program is actually run, the comments are completely ignored. They don't care about the Java runtime environment does not care. It basically just brushes them under the rug and takes care of everything else. This is just here to help the programmer have a better idea of what's going on. The next line is what we call a statement, which could be seen as a slab of plywood. A statement does something. In fact, I don't think there's any statement possible that wouldn't do something unless you're a terrible programmer. Um, a statement 
does something. And it has to end with a semicolon in Java. Not all programming or scripting languages do this. But in Java, it has to end with a semicolon indicating, all right, that's it. Statement's over. Move on to the next one. And in this statement, what we're doing is we're going to the system class, which is built into Java. We're getting its variable. We'll go over variables later. Out. And actually, I'm not sure. It's sort of a variable. It can vary. Um, out, which represents output. Where can I print text onto a screen so people can read it? Uh, and then print ln, which I said this last episode as I typed it, print line. It's actually print ln, like natural log, if you guys have done trigonometry or anything like that. Or calculus, or basically anything with logs. Um, but it's print line. That's what that means, is print line. It'll print a line somewhere. And then we have parentheses. And look at this, this whole thing. This is actually giving something a parameter value. All right, so print line takes a string um, called x, apparently. And we're giving x to it. It names it x. We don't have to worry about what it names it. We just got to worry about what kind of parameter it wants and how many the parameter needs. We feed it a string, which is strings. When you ever, ever you create a new string, more or less, uh, you have to surround it with quotation marks. Quotation marks, just like reading a book, they indicate, oh, okay, this is a set of words that correlate, but they don't necessarily relate to everything else. So a string is put in quotation marks, and then this is the only part that really matters. Um, and this is what's fed. The string is fed to print line. And then we have a closing parenthesis saying, all right, there's all your parameters. Go ahead. And that will make this method be called and executed using your string. And what this method will do is it'll print out, in Eclipse's case, to the output. It can also print to your command console, your terminal, uh, or anything else, really. You can also catch this output and do whatever you, else you want with it, but we're not going to get into that. Um, and then a semicolon to say, okay, statement's over, we're done, good job, bye. All right? So that is how this works. And then we have two closing um, curly brackets to say, all right, kill this block, this block's done, and this block's done. Tie it together, tie the knot, done. Uh, and yes, blocks can have blocks within them and blocks within them and it can become blockception. But don't get into that right now, thank you. Uh, so that is, that is it. That's this program. I know we aren't getting into games yet, but please comment below what you would like to do with the first game. And I will get started on that with the next episode. Or right, hopefully. I'm not sure. We'll get, we'll get going. I just wanted to explain some basics of the Java language so we can move forward and you guys aren't going to be completely confused. For now, though, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button corresponding to how you felt about this video. And I will catch you guys later.